I'm going to call the meeting of the uh, Buchanan City Council to order at 7 o'clock, as we normally do. Um, normally, I would start us off but with our normal tradition of uh, introducing our Wesleyan College students, but we have none with us tonight, so I don't know if they're on holiday or just didn't like the weather tonight. Um, if you'll follow me in a moment of silence, prayer, or meditation, and then we'll go with the Pledge of Allegiance. special privilege or honor tonight to, uh, this, uh, to recognize a special guest with us tonight from Governor, Governor Tomlin's office, Mrs. Dot Underwood. She is um, going to be presenting the city with a very special grant from the Land and, Land and Water Conservation Grant. Um, if Dot would join me and if you'd like to, if you'd like to discuss or introduce what your program is. It is the season of good tidings, and I bring them tonight. So, I have your application for your Land and Water Conservation Fund program, and your request has been approved from the National Park Service in the amount of $67,017. So, you guys, this is going to enable the city to construct some ADA improvements at the North Buchanan Park. So. This letter you'll keep for your records so that you have your contact information and then this is your certificate okay. for your official notification. Well, before we do the picture, uh, let me make it, uh, let me say something first. Thank you for coming out and welcome to do this for us. And uh, we are so happy to have been able to help all of our citizens of McCannon in such a way, particularly our special needs and, of course, any of the citizens that are going to be able to utilize our park. Uh, and particularly what our program was, was being ADA compliant. So it's really a fantastic thing that we've done. But I wish I could take the credit for it, but I can't. I have two gentlemen here that actually did all of the work for this program. One wrote the grant and the other one helped facilitate the grant. So as much as I'd love to take the picture with you, okay. I'm going to ask them to come up and take the picture with you because they did all of the work and I can't right. take the credit for it. Mr. Jerry Arnold and Mr. Michael Doss. Jay Hall and I. Hello, guys. Hello, Hello, guys. 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 I can't do it. <laughs> it's like on TV. You do it, you do it rotary all the time. I don't know. Thank you, Jerry, for your hard work. Thank you, Jerry, for your hard work. Thank you, Jerry, for your You're welcome. Do you work down in Charleston? I actually work in um, the Clarksburg area. Lynn Phillips is your rep um, from out of Elkins, and he's off on knee surgery, so I'm pitch hitting. Are you in any relationship to Cecil? Um, we are distant relatives. <laughs> <laughs> we are distant. Thank you so much, John. We appreciate it. You're very Thank welcome. Thank you. the governor's office. Uh, it's an instant when we got more. <laughs> So, thank you very much, and um, I think uh, everybody and all the citizens of Buckhannon are much obliged to the governor's office. If you would, any of the citizens, please write. Let the governor know how much appreciation we are, not just for our healthy citizens, but all of the citizens of not only just Buckhannon, but Upshur County, who will be able to utilize this special uh, equipment. Um, so, moving on, um, we're going to see our department and board reports, and we'll start off with Mr. Doss, our city administrator. Yes, yeah, so you do have the financial report, again, unaudited for uh, the month ending November 2014. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so far, for the year to date, in our revenues, we've collected $1,814,230.46. Um, so far to date, with all of our departments and general fund, our expenditures 
are $1,474,882.90. Is actual actually a positive overall net revenue over expenditures year to date of three hundred thirty nine thousand three hundred forty seven dollars and fifty six cents. So we continue to operate very well with our revenues over our expenditures. Um, again, I always give you a summation and report. And if you need any detailed reports, please, as always, see me after the council meeting or, or give me a call. I'll be happy to provide it, a detailed list to you. Uh, the next two items are actually items that came out of our uh, special session that we held on Monday. Um, I was charged with uh, a few items of returning and reporting back to council. Um, one item uh, is just a kind of a cleanup item, if you will. Um, I did have the opportunity to, to run this by our city engineer, Jay Holland, and get Jay's input. Um, but this is the establishment of a building and code enforcement officer. Keep in mind that the building part of, of this position uh, is a new established position, so it's something unique and new to Buchanan, which we feel will benefit our citizens and our, our honest contractors out there. But this is basically the, the polished up version, if you will, of establishing that building and code enforcement officer position. Uh, what I envision is coming back to council on the 18th and asking for final approval of the establishment of this position which will then give us the opportunity to start running an ad or ads in the papers, advertising for this position and getting folks in here uh, so we can interview those folks and get that person started so he can work with uh, Richard Clemens, our current uh, code enforcement and zoning officer, uh, to kind of learn the ropes, if you will, prior to Mr. Clemens's retirement. Uh, the next item is, again, another item coming out of our Monday meeting. And that is a, uh, our advertisement and our what we're calling statement of qualifications um, for our, our next city attorney in Mr. McCauley's retirement. Um, I wanted to get that in front of you and give you an opportunity to take a look at that. Um, also, we'll be coming back to council uh, for final approval of that one on the 18th meeting as well. Again, so we can get that position advertised, bring in the statements of qualifications, and start working so that the selected attorney can work with Mr. McCauley in his retirement, um, getting that individual up to speed. Again, that process will involve a statement of qualifications. Any attorneys interested would have to be licensed with the state of West Virginia, have a valid West Virginia Bar Association membership, amongst other things. Um, some of the stuff was taken from West Virginia code. A lot of it was taken from our, our current city charter. But they would provide a statement of qualifications. <coughs> Uh, the deadline for that right now is January 30th of 2015. Um, this is just the process to refresh everyone's memory. Once those statements of qualifications are received, they'll be dispersed to council members to get feedback. Uh, council will meet, select um, three attorneys to interview, and we'll grade those attorneys, and then we'll start negotiations with the first on their list. Uh, and we'll get into more of the financial part of that as we go along, but that's the process at this point, so I'll ask council to take a look at that request and that establishment uh, for the position of city attorney. And then uh, if you have any questions or anything, give me a call and we'll work our way through this. And uh, hopefully I'll put this back for final approval with you all uh, at the next council meeting at the end of the month. Any questions for Mr. Doss regarding his report? Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Doss. Um, I know we have Jerry Arnold next, but um, I had forgotten to add Mrs. Deborah Brockelman for her report from Stockard Youth Center. And since she has to leave right after her report, um, I thought we'd go ahead and get hers out of the way before Jerry got yours. Sorry, Jerry. Um, so, Deborah, if you'd like to give your report on Stockard Youth Center. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just want to uh, give an update on what's been going on at the Youth Center with our programs. Uh, December is our is the start of our <coughs> basketball program. Um, we begin practices this month and we'll be having games starting in January. Uh, this year we have 30 teams so far, um, 350 players plus signing up, and we'll have games every Saturday at the um, high school starting in January. Um, we also, as a part of our basketball program, we have cheerleaders and they will be um, cheering on Saturdays during the games as well. Um, 
and they have practice at the youth center at 4.30 on Tuesdays. Um, our after school program is going very well. It runs um, Monday through Thursday until after school until 6 o'clock. It's for children um, ages 5 to 12 participating daily. Currently have 85 <coughs> children registered with 50 attending each day. Um, we offer them a, happy, a healthy snack as soon as they arrive and then they split off into their clubs and they have a choice of things that they can do each day uh, including the computer lab, the library, arts and crafts, open gym, game rooms, and homework help. Um, also we have our tutoring program is going well. Um, the kids uh, meet with their tutor for a minimum of two hours a day, um, a week. Some students require more time and we accommodate that or try to, depending on the, uh, their tutor. Um, most of our tutors are Westland volunteers, but we also have several that are high school students. And the, the children relate very well to them as well. Um, right now we have 15 students tutoring and we do not have a waiting list. Um, our drill team been, has been very busy getting ready for the Christmas parades. Um, they will be participating in two this weekend, the, the Cannon and the Rock Cave <coughs> Christmas parades. Uh, we currently have 55 members and in January we'll be having a new um, recruitment. Um, other things we have going on at the Youth Center is just not for kids. Um, we have adult and teen fitness um, activity pro program activities. Um, Zumba is a favorite. It's Mondays and Wednesdays at 6 o'clock. We also have added another day five, uh, on Fridays at 5.30. Uh, yoga is Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5.30. We have uh, three karate classes, Tuesday, Wednesday at 7, and Saturdays at, at 11. <coughs> Uh, kickboxing Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5.30 and on Fridays, Friday mornings at 10. We also, our workout room is open daily at uh, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. and um, it's open to anyone who wants to use it. Um, there's a monthly fee. Um, we also have guitar lessons on Tuesdays. We have individual um, lessons as well as group sessions. Um, also, we continue to be a popular spot for birthday parties for children. Uh, every weekend is usually booked up a month or two in advance, but uh, people are welcome to call and book their party. And last, um, this weekend, we are hosting the Elk Soup <coughs> Shoot, and that will begin at 1 o'clock. Thank you, Deborah. Any questions for Deborah from the Center? <coughs> Deborah, I can't tell you how refreshing it is. Oh, go ahead, Mom. Who teaches the guitar lessons? Um, Joe Pritchard. Okay. When are those? Um, on Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Yeah. Tuesdays. That's why there said much going on. Yeah, there's a lot going on in Stalker. And uh, I've missed oh. seeing Deborah's reports and having her reports, so she came as a special request to me, and I can't wait to hear more reports from Stalker because that. That facility is so refreshing, and I would encourage all of the citizens, if you haven't had the opportunity, kids or not, to come and see uh, all of the opportunities that are available for adults and for the youth and for the children <coughs> in our community. Basketball is now in full swing, but they do a lot of other things during the different seasons. So, Deborah, thank you for your report. I know you've got to head off to, uh, to some of the basketball things, so thank you for coming in. Can I ask one quick question? Absolutely. What, Deborah, what's in the workout room? What kind of uh, um, facilities are there? We have a, a couple treadmills, we have uh, two bikes, um, and we have equipment that, um, if you remember the older, I mean, I think it's still out there, um, but it's not in, it's not he, in this area, but it was the old curves equipment. And we've had two separate donations of that equipment. Now we don't do the circuit um, training that that curves has a copyright on. Yeah. We just have the equipment there that they can use. And before you use it, we have a trainer, which she also works at the youth center. You have to go through the orientation 
before you can participate, and you also have to have a sign-off from your doctor as well. But um, we do have that equipment. <coughs> what is your monthly fee for using the exercise room? Actually, it's $20 a month. It's very very affordable. Very. And in the, um, anybody who um, is a member or of like Zumba or yoga, karate, pick, kickboxing, they get a discount as well. Thank you, Deborah. We appreciate everything you do, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Arnold from uh, Street Voice Department. Good evening. Good evening. Very Good evening. brief report uh, this evening. We haven't had a board meeting, a consolidated board meeting since <coughs> Thanksgiving week. Uh, it's actually scheduled for next week, so just a brief department report. Uh, the guys have uh, been, or we finished, actually finished up our paving that we had planned in November worked with Veterans Day and finished up the section of Pocahontas Street that uh, the new sewer line had been laid on. Uh, also, as you can tell, we still got the, the big hole out here for the flagpole in front of City Hall. We have concrete scheduled for Monday to put the new flagpole base in. We have uh, the old cast base was taken out to the waste garage and sandblasted, prepped and it'll be reinstalled around the new uh, hole. So that's in the works for next week. Uh, we continue to work. We've got backfilling to do on the sidewalk. We're installing the light poles on the East Main Street project. Uh, got a call today, the, and Jay is going to report a little more on this. Uh, the retros kits for Main Street will be delivered sometime next week. So look forward to getting to uh, install some lights. We're also doing some, uh, did some extensive drop cleaning uh, of our storm drops. Sent some guys around with the, uh, actually with the street sweeper and uh, cleaned everything from within the basins. And in doing so, we uh, found a little bit of undermining problem up on Randolph Street towards Moore Avenue on that end. And so today, guys were digging that out and exploring what was going to take place there and they made the fix and we'll be pouring that back as well. So we're still continuing to work, do street work as well as uh, working some, doing some of our inside maintenance work. And that's all I have unless you all have questions for us. Any questions for Mr. Arnold, please? Did you all put the lights up on Main Street, your department? On Main Street, on yes. On Main Street, they're yes. very nice. They look really nice. Yeah, yeah, I the, the, the fencing and stuff with those no, no, the fencing we can't take credit for. You can't? Well, not really no, sorry, no, sir, we can't <laughs> take credit for that. Who did that? Uh, Mr. Bucket. Oh, uh, he, uh, was, he, was the, he was the one that contacted me and asked if it could be done. So, <coughs> you know, we yeah. we can't take care of credit for the, the fencing, but the reeds, yes, the guys done yeah. It all looks very nice. Yeah. Yeah. The lights really do. I've, I've had a lot of people contact me. And, and just come up and say they're really beautiful and enjoy them. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Mr. Arnold? Comments? What time is that consolidated board meeting? Uh, you asked me too quickly. Dave, it's 4 o'clock on the 9th. That's Tuesday. Yeah, we moved it to Tuesday because we had another commitment. We had another commitment on Thursday. <coughs> so it's a Tuesday at 4. Thank you. Thank you for everything you got. Thank you. Uh, we have Mr. Holland, city engineer. <coughs> <laughs> That's not how it's supposed to work. <laughs> um, I'll be just as brief as Jerry, I believe. Um, update on the hazard mitigation grants for the uh, booster pumps. Um, have a call into the project manager. I was he would said we should hear something by late December, but since we're not going to meet again until the beginning of the new year, I was hoping to report something to you today, but don't have anything on that. <clears throat> Chapman Technical Group continues their work on the. Uh, Water, waste, the water treatment plant structural repairs. Uh, the project is about 75% complete, and they uh, about 65% complete on the final design drawings and specifications. They're going to work through the winter and have that project wrapped up and hopefully ready for submittal to the Bureau for Public Health and the PSC for approval. And then once the funding comes through, we'll begin the work on that project. Hopefully, uh, late 2015 or early 16. Um, Senate Bill 373, all that stuff. I'm going to give you an update on that. Uh, as I reported earlier, all the 
above ground storage tanks have been uh, submitted. The sub seven spill prevention response plans, I submitted them to the DEP on November 17th and they're currently being reviewed. And I'm about 95% complete on the certifications inspections and they would need to be submitted before January 1st, 2015, but we'll be discussing those a little bit further at the water board meeting next Thursday. Hopefully get all those little wrinkles ironed out and submit them before the Christmas holidays. I do have an update on the McDonald's Route 20 lane winding project. Um, the DOH engineering departments, you know, incorporating Sam and I's comments regarding their latest uh, thoughts on the plans. We had some concerns where there were confined conflicts with the new storms in our sewer and water. So we're gonna have an additional site meeting next Tuesday at 11 o'clock to discuss uh, our concerns. And uh, project dates have been shuffled around a little bit. Spoke with the project manager Monday and uh, the start of construction will now be March instead of January. I mean, for advertising and bidding. Uh, construction will begin in April, not February, a little more weather uh, friendly, which we all knew would probably happen anyway. And then they, they expect completion of the project by October 2015. So only a month or two into the school year. Uh, <coughs> Gateway East, Jerry reported to you that they're putting up the light poles. I received a call from uh, the Main Street light suppliers today and they're gonna ship out tomorrow. We should see those LED light fixtures come in either late next week or early the following week. Whether Jerry or not can put those up, because it won't take a lot of time, probably about a week, but it just depends on the weather and, and what his schedule is. The bad part about that is, the other half of it is, the 43 uh, East Main Street lights are not expected in until January 26th. I uh, tried uh, calling the uh, supplier on that to get a, a reason why it's taking so long, but I was unsuccessful. But we're looking at a January 26th in that area for delivery of the East Main Street lights. Uh, Gateway West, not East, but West. Uh, we have to uh, file our intent to apply with the DOH no later than December 16th. I have that application finished. It's just, uh, all I had to do was update our original 2013 grant application with new numbers. Didn't change any of the quantities or anything like that, but updated the numbers due to cost of material increases. I do want to give you the new board members just a brief update of what that entails. Uh, phase one of the project is installing new concrete sidewalks and period street lighting, just like we did on Gateway East, on the northern side of the old Weston Road. And it will go under the quarter H overpass and stop there at the Liggett Edition. Uh, approximately 3,300 mm -hmm. feet of sidewalk, uh, 28 new street lights, 10 uh, drop inlets because uh, there are some low spots in the road and we've got to get the uh, water off the uh, old western road and into uh, the drainage structures down below uh, contract one is just going to be the sidewalk portion of it and it's approximately two hundred and thirty two thousand dollars in price <clears throat> and contract two will be the street lighting and it's hundred and thirty five thousand dollars and that's what we're going to apply for and uh, hopefully we'll get some good news on that and within the next you know three to four months and I can update you in the early next year um, the Army Corps of Engineer flood protection project uh, as you all have I believe in your packet a letter that was sent to the Army Corps of Engineer after some uh, citizens and wildlife fishermen called in <coughs> expressing their concerns about the projects I talked to the fishermen because they were more concerned about uh, the fishing, how it would be affected upstream of the uh, water impoundment or dam. And I uh, informed them that uh, the project has nothing to do with anything above the dam, it's all below. So that seemed to satisfy their concerns. But uh, knowing that that was out there, I contacted the DNR, uh, Mr. Jim Walker with them and see if he had any concerns or if he wanted to be brought up to speed with the project. So I took him on a, a brief site tour uh, early in November. Uh, explained the project to him. He wrote a letter expressing his concerns. So I thought, well, maybe now's the time we get in contact with the Corps because we have citizens' concerns, fishermen and wildlife, uh, people that enjoy the outdoors concerns, the DNR, and uh, Mr. Ludlow had some concerns regarding uh, downstream of the sewer treatment plant. So wrapped that up in a letter, just expressing our concerns, requesting a meeting, a get together, a teleconference if we could discuss the project in a little more detail. I was still hoping to hear 
from Mr. Hoyer with the Army National Guard in regards to uh, the September letter that I sent to them saying if they would participate if the project is still going to be required in some way. I have not heard back from you know Major General Hoyer. Um, I'll attempt to get in touch with him before the holidays and, and update you all early next year. And finally, the source water protection plan. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up, Tom Landis will report more to you all about it uh, at the next city council meeting, but I've begun work on the source water protection plan, and that's required by the West Virginia DEP for all public water systems. In addition to Senate Bill 373, they keep throwing more logs on the fire. Um, plans due no later than July 16th, but again, the reason I mention this is we're having our first of three or four public meetings this upcoming Monday, uh, the 8th, from 6 to 8 out at the event center at Brushy Fork. It's open to the public. If you all have any concerns or questions or want to know more about what this source water protection plan is, and you'll start seeing in the papers ZCCs, which are zones of critical concern, and PCSs, which, PCSs, which are potential contaminant sources, all this will be explained and, and you know, come to fruition next Monday and I just wanted to get that out because we won't meet again until after this meeting and so if you haven't seen the ads in the paper uh, for about that meeting here's your opportunity to uh, to do that and if there's no further questions any questions or comments for Mr. Holland this is the new brushy fork or out there? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The, um, the, I forgot to mention, AKA the new Army Guard National Complex. Okay. <laughs> what, what time? Monday. Six to eight. Six to eight. PM. <clears throat> I, have, I have a question about the McDonald's uh, traffic uh, there. Is that going to affect any of the Strawberry Festival parades? They have. You know, we have expressed our concerns <clears throat> numerous times, and uh, when it was to go. This year, you know, they were going to set aside a time frame for working around that. <clears throat> I'm hoping to talk to the project manager and the project engineer about that. I, I, I would not see why not, but now it's such a condensed schedule. Yeah. I, I don't know what the plans are, but, you know, we are, we've expressed our concerns numerous times, you know, of that's the big uh, parade here and that's a big activity here in, in May. And uh, that's prime <clears throat> construction season, but how you're going to work around that, so. Uh, it, it. it is what it is. Yeah, we've got alternate, you know, the stuff, but yeah, we started East Victoria and work around. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Holland? Uh, Mr. Holland, we certainly on uh, City Council and the citizens appreciate all you do for our city. When you give your reports, I think a lot of times a lot of it is widening, grants this, grants that. But this is a great example of some of the work that you do. And as far as the ADA compliance, um, that is a big deal for us because we've been trying so hard because it is such an expensive undertaking. Okay. Um, all of the different grants that you apply for and all of the other engineering work that you do is just a small part of the overall picture that you do for this city. So I want to make sure that I express our appreciation and the citizens' appreciation for all you do, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I want to be the first before everybody on the city council gets up there to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. And <laughs> we got one more lady. <laughs> it won't be. Uh, <laughs> Chief Casey, fire department. Good evening. Just to have a few things. We've uh, ordered some new equipment for our ladder truck. We've ordered some air packs that needed to be updated. The squad vehicle that we had that was involved in an accident, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, I told you, I think my last report, it had been delivered to the repair facility and, and they're still working on it. We're getting updated reports to have the body on it, they're ready to letter it. Uh, hopefully, I would, my guesstimate is about the next two weeks we should have it back. Uh, we are in a process and we'll have, by no later the next week, we'll have submitted a uh, grant to the assistance to firefighters grant for a new ladder truck. The cost of a new ladder truck is a million dollars. Actually they just they knock it's one of those ninety nine ninety nine they knock a few dollars off of them so it sounds better but it's a million dollar piece of equipment. So we're applying for a new uh, new ladder truck. We'll have that grant submitted by next Wednesday. And last but not least, our Christmas parade starts tomorrow evening at 6.30. Lineup yeah. is Spring and Madison Street around the Wendy's area. And it follows Strawberry Lane and ends at Stockard Youth Center. And Santa Claus will be at the fire station immediately following the parade to have a visit with the kids. Thank you. 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 Thank
What's the weather forecast, Mister? Hope Sandy's got a rain suit. Uh, we're working on it. Uh, I had to meet with Mrs. Claus today, and we're checking Santa's schedule, and we're going to have a Plan B by sometime tomorrow. So. If the weather is inclement, we hope to make an announcement. We had to do the same thing last year. If the weather is bad, in all seriousness, we hope to be able to make that determination by by noon, so we can get it on the uh, the, the noon news and, and get it out. So. I've, heard, I've heard there's some other cities or towns that have uh, rescheduled. Yeah, we had to do that last year, so now we're kind of getting it Mr. Claus's mercy with, with with the scheduling and that, <coughs> you know, a lot of other things going on. So that's what. We're and I, I, along with the Christmas present, I just want to, um, I received a letter and there's been a lot of chatter and I think and it's somewhat it's good chatter about things that should be occurring in Buchanan for Christmas. You know, everybody wants, you know, we, the fire department, you know, we want to do more, to do more, to do more. The guys took on a Christmas parade years ago because there were a couple organizations that had given up on a Christmas parade the Buchanan Volunteer Fire Department for many years assisted these organizations just by lining up the parade and, and, and helping out doing our part for the community and it got to the point that one year said well we're not going to Christmas parade this year so if you know farmer very well some of them some of us are kind of stubborn we said yeah we'll be at Christmas parade so at that point in time the Buchanan Volunteer Fire Department picked up the Christmas parade and we've been doing that ever since. That's our contribution to the community and to the kids. And uh, I received a letter and, and I know it came to the city and uh, I appreciate everyone's input and the fire department's doing what we can to make this a nice Christmas parade. Our number one goal is to have a viable Christmas parade for the children. We want the children to come and see Santa Claus. Some of these children, it's the only chance they get to, to visit Santa Claus. It's, you know, they get to be a controlled environment. Uh, there's a lot of talk, a lot of ideas about what should be done for the Christmas parade. And I got a laundry list of things and suggestions that could be done for the Christmas parade. And I really, really appreciate everyone's uh, input to that. But, uh, exactly. Do if, something. Do something. <laughs> exactly. We are the Buchanan Fire Department, and we do a lot for the community. And ha as we've talked about our manpower situation, but you know, there's a lot of that in the community. I think this should be done. I think that should be done. Well, if you think it should be done, really? it's not crowded on the sidewalk to commence to do something. So I'm not being critical of anyone. I just want to say there are a ton of good ideas. I've talked to Mayor. I think he has some plans. A little late this year for Christmas, but all the all the plans and all the ideas everybody has. Christmas will be the same time next year, so you've got it all year now to <laughs> do your plan. And Jay stole my thunder. I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I appreciate that. Any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? Um, Mr. McCauley, City Attorney. Thank you. You have in your packet tonight a notice, and uh, I want to explain. I explained it last time as to the reason of the chronology of this notice. It's already appeared in the paper once. And the reason being is under this comprehensive plan, uh, statutory stuff, it's set forth in Chapter 8A of the code. It specifically provides that when the uh, city government, that is the council, uh, goes to consider formal adoption of the comprehensive plan, which is before you tonight on just a first reading, that 15 days before the meeting at which the ordinance is proposed for adoption, which is the next meeting, December 18. So even though you haven't approved anything even on first reading, we had to have the notice in the paper yesterday to satisfy that 15-day notice. So if you read that and it's like, well, gee, why are we doing a notice when we haven't even had a first reading? It's because of that 15-day requirement. So you have the, uh, the letter to the record dealt as well as that uh, public hearing notice in your package. Um, it's our practice it's not actually required by either our charter or state code, but for some time we have been posting a copy of legal notices in the foyer at City Hall as well. And I think Mr. Clemens typically puts those things on the city website. But the idea is to try to let everybody know uh, as much as humanly possible, covered on the TV tonight the whole bit, that uh, folks have the opportunity to appear and, and speak about the comprehensive plan. Now. 
as you consider here shortly the other two ordinances that are zoning planning related um, those notices aren't in the paper yet it doesn't have anything to do with chapter 8 it's covered under chapter 8 and under chapter 8 zoning type things you only have to give notice at least five days before the meeting at which the ordinance is going to be adopted so that'll come somewhere between now and prior five days before December 18th so we are uh, they're inconsistent but that's because the statutory requirements are not the same okay so there's uh, there's that and then you also have I, that I gave you just late this evening and this is only a draft it does not require your action tonight but I would like to review it with you just uh, very quickly um, if the numbers uh, stay the same and nothing else jumps ahead of this this would be resolution number 2014-19 of the Council of the City of Buckhannon which would provide for a six-month extension to the current TV cable franchise agreement with SQL 3 Communications 2 LLC, a Delaware limited liability company. And in case you're wondering who those people are, they do business as Sudden Link Communications. But uh, the formal name of Sudden Link is actually this title, SQL 3 Communications 2 LLC. And I'm not going to read all the whereases tonight because we'll do that at the next meeting. But this just basically sets the stage for up to a six month extension while we continue to work out some of the lingering details with the franchise agreement uh, with Suddenlink. I would note that, uh, as I mentioned to you last time, the last couple of franchise agreements, we merged what was a separate lease that I did for Cemetery Hill back in the 1980s with Triax Communications. Somewhere during one of those renewals in the 90s, we merged that in with the term of the franchise agreement. Because of some of the things that had happened with inadvertent trespasses and uh, exceeding authority and the whole bit, there was discussion with Sudden Lake, well, look, we, you've been using our hilltop up there, or at least a small portion of it, for free for years and years and years. Um, you guys treat the city as a business partner. We're going to treat you as a business partner. and. We've negotiated thus far um, a $500, starts out in year one, a $500 per month fee that they will pay to use that small part of Cemetery Hill for some of their equipment. Um, every year there will be a 5% increase uh, during the life of the franchise, and it's compounded, so whatever that plays out at being, but year two would be $505 a month and continues to increase as we go on. So uh, the other thing that I'm negotiating with Peter Brown is there is roughly a thousand foot, a linear foot, of a line that will be running across a portion of what's really our cemetery operation, but uh, most of this property is not suitable for graves. Uh, they also are going to pay an annual fee, uh, probably a dollar a foot, uh, which is pretty customary in the industry uh, for, for that. So what we haven't realized anything for will all of a sudden uh, result in us, the city of Buchanan, seeing uh, somewhere in the six, $7,000 a year range uh, being paid by suddenly if they're not paying now. So that's, that's a good thing. Uh, just a couple of other real quick updates because I don't have a whole lot to report about. I'm still waiting, unless Ambi has something to report about it. The final paperwork on the Angus suit, I've not seen anything about that yet. I don't think, it's, I don't think there's a release and a uh, formal settlement agreement, but we're still told that that's uh, uh, all wrapped up. Uh, mutual aid agreements with the police agencies, I'm still working on those. Uh, a couple of uh, real estate uh, matters that I'll report <coughs> at probably the next meeting involving Deer Creek. And that's about all I have this evening until we get to the big action of the night, which is the, the reading of the ordinances, unless you all have some questions for me. Any questions? Sir? Uh, Mr. McCauley, you stated in your comments that the lease was up to six months, and this says is an additional six months. Yeah. Can it be shorter than that six months? Oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah. because I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll have the franchise uh, proposal done in the next <clears throat> month or two. Okay. Yeah. But, but the franchise isn't the problem. We haven't had a lease because we merged it in as a provision in the franchise. I, I need to spend some very careful time 
uh, preparing a, a comprehensive lease that's got to be more involved than what I did back in 1985. So that was the last, that was the last lease we had with the, uh, the cable company. And I'd, I'd like to do it a one-two punch. Franchise agreement, lease agreement, do them both at the same time. Uh, that only makes sense. So Additional channel agreement. Well, you know, it, it's uh, the whole channel thing is be, yeah. be more peeved with the federal government than you can be it's with your uh, I realize cable what provider. It, it's, we're, we're at the mercy of Congress. Just the, the citizens of it still don't believe what we say yeah. about the, the channels. They don't believe what Suddenly says, and they don't believe the national news either. So uh, what can you say? Just since 1984, we've not had the opportunity to regulate <coughs> rates. We've not had the opportunity to regulate programs. <coughs> it's deregulation, and that's we've been in that mode for 30 years. In my uh, opinion, more as a citizen as opposed to a lawyer, I think it's been a a sad 30-year uh, period of time. But you know that's that's the way it goes. You talk, call your congressman. Yeah. Shelley Moore Capito will get it right. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Colley. Any other uh, questions or comments for Mr. McCauley? The only question I had, you, you said 5% per annum day. That's correct. On the, uh, there'll be a 5% increase built into the lease agreement. Uh, that will be referenced in the franchise here. Right. And that, that, that will be a six-year franchise? Five years. Five years? Five years. Okay. With an opportunity again to renew. As long as they meet the technical requirements, which they are very careful to monitor month to month, they do their testing, they certify their test results to the FCC, uh, we, we really don't have the ability to not renew the franchise. Well, I, I, thought, I thought you said 505 and earlier you said 5 or 7. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Five hundred and five dollars. Actually, it'd be five hundred and twenty-five dollars in year two, and then go up from there. Okay. Mr. Thomas, with his excellent mathematical skills, catches me yet again. So that's that's very good. <laughs> it would be five twenty-five in year two. That's correct. Thank you, Mr. McCauley. Um, any other questions for Mr. McCauley? Comments? I have a comment, Dave. As we sat down and tried to write what your job description is, as with with riches. Um, it, is, it becomes even more aware to me of the critical scope that you provide and have provided for the city as the city attorney and all of the other things in our community. Thank you. Um, I just want to make sure we get that out there because um, I am very grateful. And as you know, I get to hear it in your reports, and I've heard it when I sat over there behind the TV camera. But when I, we sit down to try to write what these requirements are and stuff, it's it comes full clear all of the services that you provide and what you have done for over the years. So I just want to make that clear. And on behalf of the citizens, I thank you for all the work you've done. Uh, moving on along, we go to D. We have correspondence. Um, it's the city council vacancy, uh, various letters of interest. We received four. Um, we will be taking those under consideration, but we have to put them as a part of the record. We will take that under consideration under the executive session at the end of our meeting. Um, and I would advise the, um, the press that uh, they may want to stick around for that because we do believe that there will be some decision coming out of that. Um, moving on to the consent agenda, we have the approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of the November 20th, 2014 meeting, approval of the building and wiring permits, and approval of the payment of the bills. Any questions on that or corrections that you can tell? Then I would accept uh, a motion to accept the consent agenda. <coughs> So <laughs> okay, they can't do it at the same time, so. Slow down. Yeah. Uh, I'll take a, I'll entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda. So move you accept the consent agenda. Moved by Mr. Pugh, second? Second. Second by Mrs. Albaugh. All in favor say aye. Aye. Discussion? All opposed? Same sign? Approved unanimously. I did that where you we were on. Uh, items removed from the consent agenda, of course, we don't have any in this case. Strategic issues for discussion and vote. We have the notice in, of the public hearing and first reading of Ordinance 385, which is in your pack, and that pertains to our comprehensive plan. Mr. McCauley, please. I'm going to read this by caption. I'll quickly go through the whereas and just observe what are in the various articles uh, to conform with our charter and state statutory requirements. This is ordinance number 385 of the City of Buchanan, an ordinance adopting the City's comprehensive plan 
pursuant to Chapter 8A, Article 3, Section 1, at SEC, of the West Virginia Code as amended. Whereas the statutory provisions of Chapter 8A, Article 3, Sections 1 through 14 of the West Virginia Code, describe the purpose and goals of a municipal comprehensive plan, and further set forth the necessary steps and procedures that must be followed in order for the governing body of a municipality to properly adopt its comprehensive plan, and whereas the immediately aforesaid statutory provisions specifically first require the municipality's planning commission to make comprehensive surveys and studies of the existing conditions and services and probable future changes of such conditions and services within the territory under its jurisdiction, that is the corporate limits of the city of Buchanan, and whereas the statutory provisions of Chapter 8A, Article 3, Section 3 of the West Virginia Code specifically provide that the City of Buchanan's Planning Commission shall prepare a comprehensive plan for the development of land within its jurisdiction and then shall recommend the comprehensive plan to the City Council for consideration and possible adoption. And whereas following years of formulation of the comprehensive plan that included the conducting of extensive public surveys gathering data, receiving citizen input, and holding numerous public hearings, the members of the City of Buchanan's Planning Commission agreed during a public hearing conducted on October 28, 2014, to formally recommend to the Buchanan City Council that the Buchanan Comprehensive Plan 2020 be adopted as the comprehensive plan for the City of Buchanan, and whereas the Planning Commission's recommendation was specifically set forth and embodied in the report dated November 6, 2014, filed together with the actual and recommended comprehensive plan, both of which were duly submitted for the City Council's consideration during and made a part of the record of the City Council's regularly convened meeting of November 6, 2014, and whereas the comprehensive plan further was presented on behalf of the Planning Commission to the City Council during the November 20, 2014 City Council meeting, and whereas the City Council, following the presentation of the comprehensive plan on November 20, 2014, then directed the conducting of a public hearing before the City Council at least 15 days prior to the meeting during which the comprehensive plan was scheduled for adoption in conformity with the statutory provisions of Chapter 8A, Article 3, Section 7 of the West Virginia Code as amended, and finally, whereas the Council of the City of Buchanan now deems it to be reasonable and appropriate to adopt the foregoing recommendation of the Planning Commission as is set forth within the Planning Commission's report dated November 6, 2014, emanating from the Planning Commission's October 28, 2014 meeting, and hence to adopt the recommended comprehensive plan, that is, Buchanan's Comprehensive Plan 2020. Now, therefore, be it ordained and enacted by the Council of the City of Buchanan as follows. Article 1, very uh, quickly, is just the uh, findings of the Council that reiterates primarily the whereas paragraphs that I just read. Article 2, uh, the miscellaneous provision uh, paragraph that is standard in these ordinances. Article 3 is the standard severability article. And Article 4 is simply the effective date. Uh, this would be effective upon, uh, well, 30 days following the second reading, which would make this ordinance the comprehensive plan uh, effective on January 18, 2015. Um, in order to, for us to continue as a city to be able to do zoning and planning and those things, uh, this ordinance had to have been adopted before December 31, 2014. You're adopting it on December 18, 2014, even though the provisions of the ordinance won't be effective until 30 days thereafter pursuant to our charter and state code. Uh, it is mature for you this evening to consider this on first reading. It's uh, my recommendation to the council that you do approve this on first reading this evening and that you st uh, establish on your agenda at the outset of the next council meeting on December 18th a public hearing uh, in conformity with Chapter 8A of the code. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. I would entertain a motion to accept well, I would entertain a motion to accept uh, the first reading and uh, to have a notice, a public hearing for Ordinance 385 concerning the comprehensive plan. I would entertain a motion. Uh, motion made by Mrs. Kupari. Second. Mrs. Albaugh seconds. Any discussion? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Mr. McCauley, first reading of the board is number 386, the zoning of the ADS property. Yes. Uh, you'll recall that back in the summer, uh, upon the application of ADS, which is owned by IAA, uh, Insurance Auto Auctions out of Chicago, Illinois, uh, they asked to bring in some property that they were uh, have a lease purchase on with Delta West, and uh, there were also a couple of separate smaller tracks owned by Delta West that uh, are not being leased that they've asked to be brought into the city limits as well. These three parcels total 5.4 acres of land. Uh, they were annexed back in the summer. The property, uh, as you will recall, as it comes into the city limits, it comes in in the most restrictive way pursuant to our Ordinance 244, which follows state statute. So anytime a municipality annexes property, it comes in most restrictively. Our most restrictive zone is uh, residential one, the most uh, R1. So this is going to make the rest of this new property compatible with the other 13 acres that they've been using for their operations out there. Ordinance number 386 of the city of Buchanan an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance number 244 of the city of Buchanan by rezoning all of the real estate, that is 5.4 acres, annexed into the corporate limits of Buchanan in July of 2014 from R1 single family residential district to industrial district. Whereas, pursuant to section 615 of ordinance 244 of the city of Buchanan, real estate annexed into the city is classified as R1 single family residence district until such annexed areas may be otherwise zoned, and whereas pursuant to ordinance number 382 adopted on July 17, 2014, and effected on August 17, 2014, the city council approved the annexation into the city's corporate limits, three tracts of land aggregating 5.4 acres, situated along or near the eastern side of the Brushy Fork Road, being Upshur County Route number seven, all in Buchanan District, Upshur County, West Virginia, all of which real estate was thus zoned R1 single family residence district and whereas pursuant to a properly published legal notice a public meeting of the planning commission of the city of Buchanan was held on October 28, 2014 to specifically consider the possible amendment to ordinance number 244 insofar as rezoning of the aforesaid 5.4 acres of land from R1 that is single family residence district to industrial district and Whereas, as a result of the aforesaid public meeting, the said planning commission voted to specifically recommend that the city council amend ordinance number 244 by rezoning the subject 5.4 acres of land from R1, that is single family residence district, to industrial district, said recommendation being set forth in that certain report dated November 6, 2014, which was previously filed with the city council, and finally, whereas, the Council of the City of Buchanan now deems it to be reasonable and appropriate to adopt the foregoing recommendation of the Planning Commission as is set forth within the Commission's November 6, 2014 report emanating from the October 28, 2014 meeting and further in the manner as is depicted and set forth upon the attached map. What then follows, again, Article 1, Findings of Council, Article 2, General Description of the Real Estate, Article 3, our standard miscellaneous provision article. Article 4, severability. Article 5, effective date. This would be a two reading ordinance and it would become effective again 30 days after a second reading passage and adoption on December 18th. It's my recommendation to the council that you approve this on the first <coughs> two readings this evening. Thank you, Mr. McCauley. I would entertain a motion to accept the first reading of the ordinance. 386, the zoning of the ADS property from R1 to uh, the commercial district. Right? Is that what it is? Yeah. Um, R1 to the I would entertain a motion. <coughs> yes. Mary Alba, motions. Second? I'll second it. Mrs. Kapari, second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Mr. McCauley. They're getting shorter each time. This is Ordinance 387 of the City of Buchanan, and an ordinance amending zoning ordinances number 244 and 383 of the City of Buchanan by repealing the College District. Whereas the Council of the City of Buchanan established the College District pursuant to Ordinance number 383, adopted on August 21, 2014, and effectuated on September 21, 2014, 
And whereas subsequent to the adoption and effectuation of Ordinance Number 383, the City Council requested the City's Planning Commission to reconsider the College District, and whereas the Planning Commission of the City of Buchanan convened on October 28, 2014, and specifically recommended <coughs> to the City Council that the College Zoning District be repealed, that recommendation having been set forth in the report of the Planning Commission, dated November 6, 2014, and received by the City Council during its regularly convened meeting of November 6, 2014, and whereas the Council of the City of Buchanan now deems it to be reasonable and appropriate to adopt the foregoing recommendation of the Planning Commission <coughs> as is set forth within the Commission's report emanating from the October 28, 2014 meeting and to repeal the College District. Now therefore be it ordained and enacted by the Council of the City of Buchanan as follows. The uh, findings provision in paragraph 1 under Article 1 uh, incorporates the above whereases. However, I think number 2 is an important thing for Council to be cognizant of, that all land that had been rezoned into the College District pursuant to Ordinance Number 383 <coughs> now shall be rezoned to its previous designation of R2, that is Residential District B. As a result of the adoption of this ordinance, it's as though the college zone, at least come January 18th, never existed, and it would go back to what was in the 1988 ordinance 244, the college uh, property would all be zoned R2 as of January 18th of 2015. It's uh, my recommendation, this matter is mature for you this evening, and it's my recommendation that you consider it on a first of two readings. Thank you, Mr. McCauley. Uh, I would accept a motion or entertain a motion for uh, to accept the first reading of Ordinance 387, the College Zone Repeal. Um, so moved. Moved by Mr. Thomas, second. second by Mr. Pugh. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Mr. McCauley. The last of the four for tonight. There's a new way of coming in January. So you're ready. Just, you think that we're done with ordinances. We always are working on ordinances. This is ordinance number 388 of the city of Buchanan. An ordinance authorizing the payment of longevity pay for full-time <coughs> municipal employees of the city, including the employees of all four of the city's utility boards. Uh, short whereases. Whereas chapter 8, article 5, section 12 of the West Virginia Code entitled compensation of officers and employees specifically provides that, quote, the governing body of every municipality shall have plenary power and authority to provide by ordinance for the allowance of time off of officers and employees with pay for vacations and illness and for personnel management incentives, <coughs> all as additional consideration for their service and employment. And whereas the city council previously adopted and approved an employee handbook, the provisions of which apply to all city employees and, whereas the city's employee handbook specifically provides under the caption, quote unquote, longevity, that, quote, the city recognizes the value of employee service and long-term commitment and dedication to the city of Buchanan. <coughs> For that reason, the city may choose to implement longevity pay as a monetary benefit for employees. Longevity pay will only be approved annually, and if the financial stability and conditions of the city's budget allow for implementation, Longevity compensation will be treated and paid as separate compensation from regular wages. An employee's year of service commences on the anniversary date of their hire, and employees do not get credit for any years of service until the accrual of one complete year from their hiring date anniversary. And, whereas the City Council now desires to specifically implement and authorize longevity pay for all full-time City employees, and including full-time employees of the City's four utility boards, now, therefore, be it ordained and enacted by the Council of the City of Buchanan <coughs> as follows. Article 1 contains the findings largely set forth in the whereas paragraphs. Article 2 provides, uh, makes provisions for calculating employee longevity pay. I think we went over those at the last meeting. Nothing has changed relative to that. Article 3 is the adoption of reasonable and appropriate administrative rules and regulations by the City Administrator. This allows Mr. Doss not to change the ordinance, but if things happen on a day-to-day, year-to-year cycle as this ordinance is administered, he can come up with ideas for that uh, implementation of things that he would then file and make a part of the record with City Council, and you get the idea with that. 
And then finally, Article 4 is simply the effective date. Again, this is a two-reading ordinance, first reading tonight. The second reading, if you pass it tonight, would be on December 18, and it would go into effect and be the law of the city uh, as of January 18, 2015. It's my recommendation that you uh, consider this and take it up on first reading tonight. Unlike the other three ordinances that we just went over, this ordinance will not require a legal ad or a public hearing, so it would simply have to be on your agenda for you to act on it on second reading at the December 18 meeting. Thank you, Mr. McCall. <coughs> I would entertain a motion to accept uh, to accept the first reading of Ordinance 388, Employee Longevity. I'll make that motion. Mrs. Kavar makes the motion. A second. <coughs> I'll second. Mrs. Alba seconds. Discussion. <coughs> yes, sir. Excuse me. I see nothing in here that tells when the payments shall be made to the employees. Okay. What month? What? As you know, I was not in favor of it being paid in <coughs> December or January because I, I thought, and I still think had it been done like that, that this would be construed as some way of getting around the Christmas bonus, which has been determined to be illegal by the tax department. Uh, I still feel that way. Uh, I discussed with you that I thought that... Uh, uh, a very fair way of implementing a longevity pay would be to pay the employee on the date of their the anniversary of their uh, employment. Uh, it, it seems to me that that would be a fair way to the employee because they don't have to wait six months or so, or sometimes in fact maybe a year, to get their longevity pay when they are entitled to it. Other companies that I have seen, including the one I used to work for, did it, and they did it on, on, the, on the anniversary date of the employee's uh, em employment. Uh, I would prefer that we do it that way, uh, and I'm open to discussions about other ways that it could be done, but I'm definitely not in favor of paying it in December or January, where it still can be construed as a Christmas bonus. If I might, um, and that was a very, very great discussion we had, and we took that into consideration and advisement. I have spoken to Mr. Doss, and he has, within this ordinance, um, the ability to provide the date. And according to your wishes, we would not be looking at actually doing the longevity payout. Now you got to keep in mind the payroll and all. We tried thinking about your idea of per hire, but that adds some really interesting accounting quirks and auditing quirks that make it really difficult for uh, Mr. Doss and for our, our assistant city treasurer. So we are, if you're still interested, we would still be uh, able to do it in March or April to affect that pay. And Mr. Doss does have, according to this ordinance, the ability to set that date. Keeping in mind now that this is unique in the situation that, and this is for all council and for the, for the citizens, that um, because we're initiating it the second half of this year, um, 2015, um, which affects 2014, 2015 we will not revisit this until the budget talks in March. That's when we would determine whether or not we actually have the availability of funds and where the fiscal uh, where we are physically within the city. That's when the city council would actually determine whether or not this is actually feasible according, and Mr. Doss, of course, has a, a lot of say in whether or not we feel that this would be possible for the, that coming year's budget. Now, having said that, we would discuss whether that's the case. Now, you have a June revision uh, to the budget. Uh, am I right to June, the first July. revision? It's July, the first revision, because the end of the year is June 30th that we can actually still, if we didn't feel that it was appropriate, not allow the longevity. So, having said that, does that answer your concerns? It, it doesn't completely alleviate my concerns, no sir. Okay. Uh, I see it, it, item B of Article 1, is that uh, where you're talking about this, Mayor? Uh, actually, no, I was looking at Article 3, um, Administrative Rules and Regulations by City Administrator. <coughs> which actually kind of refers back to that, but yeah. He has the ultimate take, 
date because of the fact that it's a bookkeeping payroll issue. Well, and he, he recommends to the council. He right? recommends yeah. to the council. I uh, I would be very open to having this paid like uh, the month right before the uh, 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 the fiscal year ends. Uh, I still think March, April is a bit early. If it were paid in June. The well, only thing with June and July is it's end of fiscal year beginning. So at the end of June, we're trying to get all of those expenses well, see, wrapped it seems up like then we've, we've, in July. It seems like then there's four months out of the year then that we don't want to do any work to implement that. How much work is involved in, in doing it on an employee's anniversary date? Well, the thing is, I mean, you, you, want to, you want to keep that separate from the entire payroll process. So you would run it a week in between the biweekly process. Yeah. And to be honest with you, a, a lot, number one, there's a lot of folks that actually their anniversary date is in January, between January 1st and January 15th. There's, there's actually several. Um, the other thing is, I mean, conceivably, you could be running a payroll process in between your actual biweekly payroll processes. I mean, so you'd be constantly, and you may do it for one, one individual, you, you know, so it would, it, it would be kind of an arduous process. We would be paying and, you know, put, conceivably printing out checks every week. Is there a chance that uh, any, any employee may, if they were terminated for any reason, ever be owed a uh, longevity fee uh, because they hadn't been paid within the time that they lived there? If you, if you set it up on their anniversary dates, you could run into that problem. I mean, honestly, the best thing to do, and again, it, it's the wishes of counsel, and it, it can be changed, you know, because we're in between first reading and second reading, whatever you want to set up. Um, preferably, it would be good to just set a, a date, if it's March 1st, April 1st, the 30th, or whatever those months. It's just the ones that don't work out the well for us is closing out our books and then opening up our books, and that, of course, is June and July. But, uh, I mean, from our standpoint, uh, anything else is open the other, the other 12 months. Can I, can I say something about this? Mm -hmm. Mr. McCall. I, the, the state legislature is very, very antsy, very careful about uh, compensation to governmental employees. Mm -hmm. So there's state law that speaks to this. And if you create a compensation mechanism, such as this one, which is beyond the regular pet, it has to be done, that opportunity to do that has to be established by ordinance. This ordinance will not pay one penny to anyone. It simply creates an opportunity for this council if whether it's March, April, Halloween, whenever, whenever you guys would decide, if you decide, that uh, there are revenues uh, sufficient, that your bank account's good enough, that you want to do the longevity pay for the full-time employees you have that opportunity. Without this ordinance, you don't have that opportunity. You couldn't consider it under any circumstances. So this is just a year-to-year -year cut. It allows you on an annual basis, not more than once a year, to consider it, but you don't have to do it. This ordinance could sit there for 50 years, be effective, and you never pay a penny out to anybody. On an annual basis, the governing body would determine that. Thank you. Uh, I any, other, any other questions or comments? We'll come back. I have more. I have some comments. So. Okay, Mr. Thomas. Um, this um, ordinance triggers a couple of things that um, <clears throat> we really didn't think about, or I didn't think about in our workshop Monday or the previous council meeting. Um, you know, David, there's a, uh, when we have the full time employees, um, there may be situations where a member at the college, uh, we had seasonal and uh, part-time employees, and some of those were, um, especially in the part-time category, may have been there 10 or 20 years in a certain position, but they weren't defined as full-time. And uh, I think we ought to think about that. I don't know how many individuals are like that in the city that would be considered long-term part-time uh, employees but I think they ought to be considered also and I, I sorry I didn't think about that before but I think 
I mean, I don't know if we have people like that have been 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years as simply part-time. Um, that's something we might want to consider. And then uh, this ordinance triggers uh, with me that I think at some point in time uh, we need a comprehensive review of our compensation uh, packages for our employees. Um, you know, I don't know what our life insurance is for uh, our individual employees that, um, you know, term life, group life is very, very inexpensive. And it's something that we ought to take a look at, as long, along with all the other kind of benefits that we provide our employees. So I think we have to take this in context that this is simply one element, one component, but it may be time for us to take a look at what are we providing our individual employees. And I think the council uh, last workshop, and council being part of that, we used the term underpaid, um, incentive, and I think we have to be careful how we, you know, do we underpay, do we overpay, do we pay appropriately, and I think all of us on the council need to have a more uh, in-depth review of what our compensation packages are for our employees. I'm conceptually, philosophically, I'm a support of this, and I think you've written the, uh, you and Michael have written the ordinance in such a way it gives us maximum flexibility. Remember also that the, the term full-time employment has been previously defined in other employee ordinances, which are not being, you're not abolishing those. Right. And full-time versus full people that work 40 hours a week as a seasonal play, those are distinguished in the employee handbook that you approved two or three years ago. <clears throat> so I was trying to create with Michael's Michael was the architect, I was the bricklayer, uh, trying to, to not have an ordinance that became 10 pages long that referenced a whole bunch of other unnecessary things that we didn't really need to reference. Yeah. And maybe, maybe my observation about you know, long-term part-time is not pertinent, but I, I, that's something I just wanted to throw in. Well, Mr. Thompson, to address your concerns, it's something Michael Dawson and I have already talked about. We're looking at scheduling a workshop council to address just the issues you're concerned with. We're looking at saying, okay, we might as well take a look at the compensation, what are the benefit packages, and exactly what it is defined that an employee gets for the city. Your calls have been heard, and they will be answered, sir. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Any call for motion? I, still call for I have a call for the motion. Uh, so I have, a, I have a motion and I have a second. All in favor say, uh, we already discussed it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign? No. Motion carries. Um, thank you. Let's see here. Comments and announcements. Um, we we'll start with Mrs. Albaugh. Um, I just wanted to say that the uh, first working meeting that we had of council <coughs> that Mr. Doss conducted was one of the most productive things that that I've experienced and I'm glad to hear that we're going to have more of those and um, also I wanted to let you know that at last night's um, planning commission meeting um, Mr. Clemens was elected as the president of the planning commission until his retirement in 30 June or sooner as he says and um, Mrs. Ann Livesey was elected as the vice president for the planning commission for the next year, and uh, and that was the only thing we conducted last night, other than or we had no business because we have no taskings from the city as of yet, but because um, we finished the 2020 plan, and um, but we did vote that Tuesday, the first Tuesday of the month, is the most important or most best day for everyone concerned to have our meetings if necessary so and that was all thank you Mary uh, Mrs. Clark I thought the meeting we had was very productive also and uh, I thought that was a very good thing for us to start doing um, other than that I, I just wanted to say I just want to put a little shout out for do you, does everybody know who Phyllis Costin is from the college okay yes. she's the one who started the learning center well, if you get the Oprah magazine, her daughter Susie is featured in there as one of the makeovers this, this month. 
uh, she is um, um, she is an animal shelter person and she travels from New York to California and uh, she actually I used to do her hair and she's 50 years old now but they did a, they did a makeup over over and uh, one of the five people that Oprah Winfrey chose and she's in her December magazine she lives in upstate New York and she lives in New York and I just thought the community might want to know that that's all. Really nice. Thank you, Pam. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Pugh. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I, I too would like to express my appreciation to the governor's mm -hmm. office for the 88 grant. Uh, something that I've been very adamant about was getting something for the, uh, the, 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 the children that are special needs that can't use our park at, at, on Park Street. Uh, I'm so happy over this that uh, I, I might even break a leg so I can go over there and use it myself one of these days. Please don't do that. But, uh, <laughs> uh, the second thing I want to want to speak of is that uh, December 13th, uh, 7 o'clock in the evening, uh, Sudden Link has most graciously uh, sponsored a benefit concert for the Parish House. Uh, the admission for the concert will be a can of food or a maybe a, a toy for the Toys for Tots. There'll be a young Marine there uh, collecting toys, and uh, if any of the ladies out there want to get their picture taken with this uh, super dressed, nice young man, I'm sure that uh, that can be arranged also. Uh, if you want to get your picture taken with me, that'll be a different subject. Uh, but the concert will be uh, uh, very professional. All the musicians are professional musicians, and I've sang in Nashville and the, the White House, and. Mm -hmm and uh, places like that. And uh, there'll be three acts. They will, at 7 o'clock, there'll be door prizes uh, handed out throughout the period. And once again, uh, please come out and support the Parish House Where because, it, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say where it was, did I? Time. I'm not going to tell you. Okay. It's, uh, it's at the Performing Arts Center at Wesleyan College. <laughs> and they have most graciously donated that use of that to us also. So, uh, and the merchants downtown, uh, the ones I've been able to see, are giving uh, graciously for uh, door prizes and such. And I appreciate that so much and invite everybody out on that day. There's a lot of stuff going on. I know it's uh, December 13th, 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, Who's going to be there? Well, it, it'll be a, um, Ed Crawford, who sang uh, 10 years with the Kingsman Gospel Quartet. He was the lead baritone with them. Uh, he's a Buckhannon boy, if anybody knows uh, 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 Rella and Bob Martin, uh, that's his mom and dad. The, um, there'll be a, uh, I can't remember what the name of the trio is, they're from Kentucky. Uh, uh, Leah Michelle, a uh, young lady, uh, fabulous singer, is going to uh, be the, the third one. And, uh, so, and there'll be Christmas Carol singing and Santa Claus will be there also. Uh, I, th I think that's about all I've got, except I want to say one thing about the Planning Commission meeting. I don't ever like to be detrimental or anything like that, but that was absolutely the worst held meeting uh, as far as Robert's Rules of Orders and everything that I have ever been to in my life. And I'm ashamed to see that Rich Clemens did not conduct okay. that in a reasonable... Thank you. Thank well, you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pugh. Um, Mr. Thomas, you got any comments? I have two comments. Sir? Um, the... Um, the work, the work session we had on Monday, um, this past Monday, was, I think, very good discussion. And uh, I gave my phone number out, <laughs> so I've had a number of calls. And uh, I just wanted to uh, indicate to uh, the citizens and residents that there is nothing set in concrete. Um, this is uh, open for discussion uh, as far as the, the fees. And uh, I think that we as council members, we really need to uh, listen to uh, individuals that are, have, uh, you know, we, none of us have our own capital at risk most of the time, like the business people. And I think we need to be very cognizant of their input. I think we ought to approach the Chamber of Commerce. And this is something that's going to take time. It's not going to be done in the next 30 or 60 days. We need to have an in-depth conversation with a lot of different people. And, you know, th there's a lot of, a lot of financial <coughs> issues that we're all facing in our society today. I suggested 30 years ago we consider metro government, and I almost got hung by suggesting that. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, a work, it's a work in process, and I hope everybody 
will provide input. We're going to have town hall meetings and so forth. Yes, sir. Uh, my second comment is um, I, I want to think that people, I want to say this very carefully, um, this is a time of year where you're going to get a lot of phone calls from telemarketing operations right. to ask you for money. And oftentimes, I've, I've said up here numerous times the last number of years that there are individuals that will call you and give the impression that they're ex-law enforcement and they're asking for money so they can take a child for 250 bucks or I don't know if the numbers change yet. But when you ask that individual, if, you know, how much is going to actually go if I get $500 or $200, how much is actually going to go for the benefit of the child, they usually will hang up on you. And uh, I don't want to single any particular telemarketing outfit that does this, but it, it happens all the time. I got a call today. I have a, a, uh, a phone that provides me the number that's calling and who's calling, and it said, Dave Thomas calling. I'm going, geez, what the heck's going on? Well, it's a scam, you know, and just be very, very careful. I think the paper needs to talk about this. Uh, there's so many good things going on in our community. Um, I've just found out that there were 330 angels adopted uh, from the Salvation Army for Upshur County. That's probably an investment of thirty-five or $40,000 for our kids. The parish house does stuff like the concert going in and so forth. Um, the Moose had a Christmas shop where you can go in and buy a toy for a dollar that would normally cost 15 or $20 at Walmart, and Walmart participates in that. So be careful what you're doing. Give to organizations, whether it's a parish house or Salvation Army or local church. There's a lot of good organizations out there, but there's a lot of scam artists too. And uh, I just wish you all a happy holiday. I'll do that again on the 18th. And uh, have a nice, safe evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Um, I just have a few things. First of all, my comments are, um, I, I cannot tell you how fortunate I am in the position that I've been placed in to get to work with uh, the folks that I work with in our city. And uh, a great example, of course, is Jay Holland, Jerry, the teamwork with Mr. Doss as well for this one grant. But we get grants all the time. And as we walk down the street, and as I got to watch them put up our Christmas lights and our decorations downtown, again, the hard work that they do. Um, I took a tour out at the, uh, again, at the sanitary plant because I love this thing called the Pistocrit. If you ever <laughs> want to look that up, I had to throw that word in there. Um, you've, got, you've got to be really impressed with the hard work that these folks give every day. A couple of announcements that I have. I would like to make sure that everybody's aware on December 11th at 7 o'clock, we're going to have the Animal Care and Control Commission meeting. That's a, regarding Ordinance 300. It regards all of our uh, city uh, pet animal care control within the city of Buchanan. Uh, I want to make, uh, I want to thank Doss, Mr. Doss for his leadership of that workshop. And I want to remind everyone that we will be setting up a town hall in January to discuss the things that we talked about at our special meeting. Uh, I am not going to forget that. That will not be put off to the side. We will be having it. It will probably be right in the middle of January. So I want to make sure everybody's aware of that. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. It's always great to see the crew here and, of course, our press and correspondents for being here tonight. So having said that, um, I would accept a motion to go into executive session per what personnel for personnel per West Virginia Code 6 9A 4. Mrs. Albo didn't get to make comments, did she? Yes. She started it. Okay. Well, I'm losing my mind. I'll make a motion to go into executive session. I'll second. <laughs> motion and second. All, all in favor say aye. Aye. Post same aye. sign. Thank you, Dave. Yes. I'm going to reconvene the meeting of the city council after executive session and duly discussed. Um, I would entertain a motion to a, appoint Robin Simons as the new city council member uh, to replace Mr. O'Neill after his resignation. I would make that motion, I'll sir. Second. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Pugh, a second by Mrs. Kupari. All, uh, any discussion? Third all, by me. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Congratulations. I, would, I do want to, for the record though, before we convene the meeting, um, Mrs. Jenkins is going to explain for the press, the uh, process by which the next election cycle will proceed. Because we are in a unique situation with the amount of people that will be up for re-election and a unique position on 
uh, the position that Mrs. Simons has. I will, for the record, state that Mrs. Simons only um, is is only elected to, to the next election cycle, which is 2016, which I will allude to Amby to discuss or explain the rest of the cycle. Okay, I'll try to explain it. Um, in the 2016 election, the call for election will call for three council seats for four-year terms and one council seat for a two-year term and the mayor's position. So in other words, there's going to be five positions on council. But you have to make it clear the one position that Robin will be filling until the next regular election, according to city charter, is will be for the two-year term and one you, you, when you come in to file, you would only file for either the, if you're filing for council, the four-year term or the two-year term. Amby, would that be designated on the ballot? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, yes, it would be on the ballot, and it would be also on their call so for candidacy. So you'll also. have a separation of you're it running would, for either two-year It would be, four. yes. It would be for the three offices, four-year term, and for the one office, two-year term, and for the mayor's, four-year term. I don't think we've ever had five. I don't. No, I think that's for a very time. unique situation that we that we're placed in. But we're going to be able to handle it. Um, in fact, we may be able to bring a unique story to an election seminar we have to go to in uh, January or February. Yeah. So it's a unique story. Having said that, is there any questions or comments from the uh, audience? Congratulations, Council. You've done good. Thank you very much. Oh, we appreciate I that. I second that. You can go home. <laughs>